What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another episode of JTAG and RGH Tutorials. So in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to update your dashboard. Now I was, this video was supposed to be how to get uh, your console on Xbox Live and I'm going to do that next episode. Uh, but I do need to cover this, it's very important because if you don't get your dashboard updated to the latest version and when you go on Xbox Live, you'll then be presented with an update from Xbox Live. And if you do that update from Xbox Live, then your console basically gets bricked. Uh, and, you know, you've basically ruined your your JTAG or your RGH console. Or, at the very least, it just won't update, but then it won't let you on Xbox Live either. So it's very important you get your dashboard updated. Now, if you already have your... Um, console updated to the latest dashboard then you can skip this video but if not it's very important that you follow all the steps and this we are going to be writing the NAND in this video so flashing uh, the console's firmware there is a bit of risk involved in that but if you don't update your dashboard then you're going to run into issues where uh, you know newer games are not going to work they're going to crash uh, certain games are going to crash when you're on system link and, and local play um, and then various other bugs tend to happen. So even if you're not going on Xbox Live, you should update the dashboard to the latest version. So first of all, you want to head into System and go to Console Settings and scroll down till you find System Info, uh, which will tell you what dashboard version you're on. So as you can see, I'm on 2.0.17502. The 17502 part is the interesting bit. That's the version that we're on, so 17502. The latest version from when I'm making this video is 17511. Um, and it's been like this probably for over a year. It's been 17511. Um, so yeah, that'll probably be the latest version from when you're watching this video. If not, uh, it'll be in the description what the latest version is. Uh, and I'll put a download to uh, the XE build that you're going to need to update to the latest dashboard in the description. And I'll keep updating it if, when if and when new dashboard updates come out. So 17502, we need to update to 17511. So first thing we need to go ahead and do is download some stuff on uh, on the computer. So I'll switch over to the computer and show you guys what to do from there. Okay, so once you're on the computer, what you're going to want to do is download Simple360 NAND Flasher and XEBuild GUI. They'll both be linked in the description. They'll be in zip files or WinRAR archives. Just extract them to a folder like I've done here. And then what you want to do is transfer that over to your console. So I'm going to use Xbox 360 Neighborhood to do this. To do this. So I'm going to head to Homebrew and take my Simple360 NAND Flasher folder and drag that into my homebrew folder along with my homebrew apps. So Simple360 NAND Flasher allows you to read and write to your console's NAND. So basically read the firmware off the console and write new firmware to the console. Uh, that's what we're going to be using this for. And if you don't have neighborhood set up again, you can just, you know, copy it over using a USB stick with XEX menu. Uh, then what you want to do is just double click the default.xex file. And what that'll do is it will launch Simple360 NAND Flasher. Uh, and then you should only have one option right now, which would be press X if you want to dump your NAND. So just press X and it will start reading the firmware off your console. And you're just going to wait for this to get to 100%. Okay, so we're nearly there. And there we go, done. So it'll say NAND dumped, press any key, any button to exit. So I'm just going to press A and that should kick me back to the dashboard. Okay, and now if I go back to neighborhood, if I refresh, you can see I now have this flash dmp.bin file. That's our backed up NAND. What you want to do is just drag that over to your desktop. Or again, if you don't have neighborhood, just use XCX menu to copy it to a flash drive and, and uh, plug that into your computer. And once you have it, you're going to need XE build. So we're going to open up XE build. Again, link is in the description. And on XE build, you want to open the flash DMP file. So, so you're going to go ahead and open up your flash DMP.bin in here. And then you should see most of this should be ticked apart from CPU key. All of this will be filled in automatically for you. So it should detect the build type. It should detect the motherboard. Um, all of that should be fine, but you need your CPU key. So we need to get the CPU key off your console. 
So there's a few ways that we can go ahead and get the CPU key off the console. So first, uh, first way is involves you having to type out the CPU key yourself. So to do that, we head into uh, dash launch installer and then default.xcx. So that'll launch dash launch. So you can get your CPU key from dash launch. You just have to um, press right bumper and then press right bumper again, go down to system info and then the third one down on the left is your CPU key. It says it right there, CPU key um, underneath your serial. So you can go ahead and type that into like a notepad document on your computer. Okay, so another way to get your CPU key, if you switch the console off and turn it on by the eject button, make sure you're connected to the network when you do this as well. So make sure you're connected to um, either your router with, a, with an ethernet cable or to your computer with an ethernet cable and you've got connection sharing set up uh, with that. And when you launch it using the eject button, uh, you'll see that it loads this Zell Reloaded, which is like a Linux loader for the 360. And it gives you your CPU key here, but it also gives you a network config address, like I said, if you have your network set up on it and it's connected to the network, there'll be an IP address in here and you can actually just type that IP address into XEBuild. So all you have to do is type in that IP address into the IP to Zell box and then you can click get CPU key from network and that should go ahead and copy the CPU key directly into the box for you uh, when you have Zell Reloaded open. Another thing you can do as well, so another option is to type in that same IP address into uh, your URL bar of your internet browser and that should take you to this page here that's hosted on your console and you can just copy the CPU key directly out of here. So that is another thing you can use as well. Uh, this page will only appear when you're actually on um, when you're actually on Zell Reloaded. So you need to be on Zell Reloaded in order to get the CPU key off the network. All right. So now that we've done that, I'll just go ahead and turn off the console and turn it back on normally. So we boot into the normal dash. And now we can go ahead and basically create our updated image. So make sure the kernel version is on the latest one, which is 17511. And make sure all these are ticked at the bottom. Disable fcrt.bin check if you have the option to do so. You will only get that option on slims. So if you have a fat console, then that should be grayed out and and you won't be able to click it, which is fine. You don't need to do it on fat consoles, but on slim consoles, I recommend enabling that. Um, otherwise you can get issues where the disk drive isn't working. Check KV, make sure all the KV information shows up. That means you have the right CPU key. And yeah, once you've confirmed all of that, you can just generate the hacked image. And what that's gonna do is basically update your NAND with an updated freeboot image of the latest dashboard and it should output to the same location as your flash DMP. So for me, that's the desktop. So it's outputted this UPD flash dot bin to the desktop, which is our updated uh, version. So this is the version that has the latest that's on the latest dash. So from there, we can copy this back over. So now my console's booted back up. I can head back into homebrew back into simple 360 NAND flasher. And this time I'm just going to drag this UPD flash file into simple 360 NAND flasher folder and essentially just double click the default.xcx to launch it. Okay, so when you open it this time, because we have the UPD flash in there, we'll get three options. You want to press A. Um, B will save flash, which will dump the NAND and write it. We've already got a flash DMP, so we already have a backup. So we can just press A to, to flash and then it'll say press start if you want to continue. So just press start and it'll say do not touch your console or controller. So don't touch your console or controller, just let it write the NAND. And uh, once it gets to 100%, it should automatically shut down uh, the Xbox. So just give it, I would say, give it about uh, 10 seconds or so, leave it off for 10 seconds and then turn it back on. Uh, once it uh, shuts down automatically. Uh, also just to note, uh, okay, here we go. So it's shutting down now. Also just to note that um, 
cons some consoles will have larger NANDs, uh, so it'll take longer to read and write them. So don't be too concerned if it's taking like much, much longer than than mine is to to dump or write the NAND. That's that's normal for certain consoles. Okay, so here we go. We're back booting up here. And let's go ahead and check. So system. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Console settings, console info. So there we are. 17511. We are on the latest dashboard, but we're not done yet. Because if you can notice, I don't have my avatar showing up. Now, a lot of people overlook this and don't bother doing the avatar update, which is the sort of second part of the dashboard update that we need to do. Um, it is important if you leave it, uh, you will get, you know, issues where you'll get crashes on certain games um, and certain things won't work. So it's definitely important to have it. Plus, uh, if you go on Xbox Live, you'll still be prompted to do a system update um, when you connect to Xbox Live, even though it will just do the avatar update anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's definitely, you do you do need to have the avatar update to avoid bugs and glitches and stuff in the future. So in order to do this, let me just switch back over to the computer. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to go ahead and download it from Xbox Live or xbox.com. So xbox.com. Now I'll put the link uh, in the description, but you know, Microsoft changed this website every now and then. So uh, if the link in the description doesn't work, then just follow what I'm doing here. So go to Xbox support, go to Xbox 360. Uh, as soon as it loads, God damn, this site is slow. Okay, here we go. And then go to how to get a new Xbox 360 update. Come on website. Here we go. Uh, and then copy to a USB flash drive and download the update file right here. And that'll start downloading the update. So what you need to bear in mind with this is that um, you don't want to just install this update before you do all the other stuff. So when you download a system update from Xbox Live, it tries to install the normal retail firmware. And obviously doing that onto a JTAG or an RGH is gonna break it because it's designed to run with freeboot firmware with the exploited firmware. Uh, so what we've basically done is we've already updated the dash, we've updated our exploited firmware, our freeboot firmware, and we've already updated that to the latest dashboard. So that when we then install this update from Xbox Live, uh, or from xbox.com, it will just install the additional stuff, just the avatar update and, you know, all the additional stuff. It won't try and flash the NAND because it will already detect that you're already on the latest dashboard version, but you're missing some of the assets and stuff related to that dashboard uh, update. So it's, that's what this is going to install, just those missing assets that you don't have, like the avatar update and stuff like that. All right, so what you're going to want to do is get a USB stick. Let me just plug mine in. So make sure it's a USB on FAT32 format. So if we right click and go to properties, you can see it's FAT32. Make sure it is FAT32. And then what you want to do is just extract the system update folder to the root of the USB stick and make sure it is the root of the USB stick that you are copying this folder to, don't put it in, inside any other folders in the USB drive, otherwise it won't work. Okay, and it's done. Now you can plug this directly into the console and in about five seconds or so, you should get an update prompt. Now, if you do not get the update prompt, then it's because you have to rename the folder um, and I have to do this on my console in order for it to, to be detected. You will probably need to do the same. Uh, so what you need to do is just rename the folder and change the first S uh, in system to another dollar sign. So it's like this, dollar dollar Y-S-T-E-M update. That's what you want to call it. And then unplug it and plug it into your console. So let me bring this up and I will plug in the USB stick now. So give it about five seconds or so and you should get a 
update prompt. That's detected. There we go. So update required. So I'm just going to say yes, and it's going to install those additional files. Obviously, if we did this at the very start and we didn't go through the whole XE build thing, then this would flash the NAND and brick the console. But because we've already updated it, it's it's not going to reflash the NAND. It's just going to install the additional uh, assets that uh, that were missing. So when it finishes, it should go really really fast, and it will start. It will reboot the console. Okay, so it's booted back up. I'm having some issues with Aurora, by the way, at the moment, which is why I don't have all my stuff added to it. It's API key's not working. Uh, but yeah, so I'll go back to the dashboard here, and as you can see, my avatar is there. We're all good. Avatar working, console working, and we are on the latest dashboard. So that is how you fully update to the latest dashboard. Now, when we go to the next episode of JTAG and RGH tutorials, when we actually get online, get on Xbox Live, uh, you should not get an update prompt to do a system update when you connect to Xbox Live because you will already be on the latest update. So you should just connect to Xbox Live fine. Uh, and as for people who are not wanting to get on Xbox Live, well, at least you're on the latest dash now so that, you know, you shouldn't run into bugs with launching games or, you know, connect. Uh, connect doesn't work if you don't have the avatar update. And there's definitely some system link bugs. Link as well. There's issues with using Link um, when you don't have the avatar update on certain games as well. When you try and use system link, it kind of does a fatal crash. That's usually related to the avatar update. So, yeah, that is how you get it fully updated. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. I, I know it's a long video, but there was quite a lot to cover there. Hope you guys were able to uh, stick with me through that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode.